On this episode of AV Social, we look at social media platforms, which ones you need to invest your time in and how you assess whether or not it is worth your time and investment. Also looking ahead to the year using content calendars. All that and more next on AV Social. The network for the AV industry. What are you listening to? This. This is AV. This. This. This is AV Nation. Nation. This is AV Nation. This is AV Social, episode 30, recorded Monday, January 29th, 2018. Content calendars. Support for AV Nation is brought to you by Chief, the global leader in commercial AV mounting solutions. This is AV Social, the monthly look at social media, marketing, and communications in the audiovisual space. My name is Tom Albright. I'm your host. With us to talk about all that and more uh, this month is, first and foremost, Karen Schmidt. She is from Chief. How are you, ma'am? Hello. Good. How are you? Doing well. Doing well. Uh, Also with us is Olivia Selke. Olivia is a first-time guest here, and she is from Cedia. Welcome, ma'am. Thank you so much. It's great to be here. Uh, so let, let's start, start off here. This is our first show of the year. And um, I wanted to kind of get a, a, a handle on social media and marketing and, and communications for the year. Um, and so to start off here, and Karen, we'll start with you on this. Um, when you're laying out your year, um, what are some of the, 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 the goals that you have? And I'm not asking specific, but, but how do you lay out your goals for what you want to get accomplished for the year? Uh, yeah, well, we're, we're a little bit different just given the nature of the multiple brands, but um, we will go through and create sort of say a calendar um, that would include product launches, main product launches for all the brands, um, different events that we're all going to, different training goals or things that we're trying to accomplish throughout the year that we'll map out across um, the media calendars too for our major publications. And then we look at that and see what areas we have where we can work together too across the brands. Where might a couple of us be able to work together and where might all of us work together? Where might one of us just kind of be working by themselves for a quarter or whatever? Um, and this year we're trying something a little bit different in, in doing sort of core quarterly content okay. uh, for each of the brands and then sort of cross brand pieces, which we think will just help us focus a little bit with, with all the different brands that can get a little bit um, all over the place if we let it. Uh, so we have this large content map calendar basically that goes through at least the first half of the year. It gets a little more vague the second half of the year, but just based on events, launches, um, media calendars, and overall sales and ship goals for the year. You mentioned uh, creating content for not just the partners that you have in, in the media, but also your internal stuff. Is that something that you guys handle internally, or is that something that you, you, you subcontract out? Um, both. Uh, we've we've used both approaches. Um, there's a lot of talented people who have a lot of um, things to to talk about here, and so we'll we'll use that. But there's other areas where we realize we can't do everything, and other people may know more about it than us. So we've we've done both, um, subcontracting out and producing internally. All right, uh, Olivia. Same kind of question. Um, not for nothing, but uh, CD just had the their first board meeting, I think, of the year. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. Okay, uh, so you're, 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 you've already got the, the, the game together for the year. Um, how do you guys lay out your, so you, you've had that first meeting. So how do you guys kind of lay out, you know, what, where you're going and what you want to talk about for the year? Yeah, you know, it's very similar to what Karen was describing. When you are in marketing, calendars are your friend. <laughs> Being able to map out for the year and look at all the events and activities you have going on. And, you know, we always look at the, the schedule with media too and what, you know, residential systems and CE Pro and everyone else is going to be covering and how we might tie some of CDS education in there. Or if there are topics that we should be paying attention to based on what other media is covering. So, um, yeah, just very similar. We have, you know, the first half of the year pretty well mapped out and then there's room for us to be nimble and agile with things that come up. Well, let's actually talk about this because we're, we're recording this the end of, of January. There have already been a couple shows that happen. Uh, Libby, we'll start with you on this. CES, and let's be frank here, you know, Cedia is, is the organization for, for residential AV dealers. CES has already happened. So is it something where you guys start planning in more November and October? 
for your year or is it, you know, December because, you know, CES is coming up and the other shows? Um, we definitely start planning, you know, I would say after the CDO show in September, that's kind of our general reset um, to look at what, what do we want to accomplish in the coming year. And then again, we always just leave a little wiggle room because you never know what's going to be coming out. We work in an industry that is so fast moving and things are always changing. So we try and keep it flexible just so we can stay current. Karen, you guys, that is, if, if that is your first show, if I'm not mistaken, I believe uh, that, that Chief as a company attends and, and talks with clients and, and vendors, uh, is the same kind of question. Is that something where you guys start planning that out, you know, a month or two beforehand with, with your content calendar? Um, yeah, so we don't, uh, Chief doesn't attend CES anymore, but the consumer side of the business does for us. So Stannis um, takes that. So yeah, there are months ahead on that one. Um, but even there with some of the shows, a smaller education show is like TCEA, you know, we've got to think about that in advance. Even DSC, we're already starting to plan our marketing for that in the year prior. So uh, that, that kind of stuff, that media buying and things gets talked about probably in October in November where you're starting to look at your ad plan for the year. So we, we hope that we have our entire calendar nailed down by like the end of November or early December. Um, doesn't always happen, but that's, that's the goal. <laughs> that's the goal. Uh, all right, speaking of, of trade shows, uh, Karen mentioned DSC will, will be there as well. Uh, I mentioned the fact that we're recording this at the end of January. Uh, you know, the biggest, the, the first biggest trade show, uh, well, the biggest AV trade show of the year happens uh, in the first of, of February, uh, ISC, Integrated Systems Europe 2018, uh, is in Amsterdam. Um, both of your organizations have have a significant part of that. Yeah. Uh, Olivia from, from CDS side, they're half owner of it, right? Uh, yeah. Karen, fr from your side, Milestone, and, and now as a part of Legrand, uh, two significant boosts there. Uh, Karen, we'll start on you with this. Um, what do you guys do differently in your marketing and your communication surrounding trade shows, whether it's ISE or DSE or even uh, some of the other ones? Um, yeah, we do ramp up social presence around shows and, and try to see what people are, are talking about and produce some some interest around the things that we're going to be showing, which um, that in itself is is sort of different for us around some of the major shows. We, you know, we'll talk about, clearly we'll talk about the product launches that we have coming up a little earlier than we would have normally so it sort of pushes up um, the whole timeline for the things that you're producing for a product launch um, to make sure that you have some sort of framework for what you want to talk about and some plans for social um, probably a little earlier than you would have normally depending on ship dates so we have a lot coming up that we wouldn't necessarily have sorted out for um, ISE based on timelines but they'll be soon enough afterwards that you're going to hear a lot about some new products from us. Well that actually raises a really good question about product launches and um, we have done a, a, a few um, pre-interviews for, for ISE and, and, mm -hmm. and kind of get people uh, interested in what they have coming up. And, and a couple of manufacturers, we, we had to adjust how, what we were talking about based on what was actually going to be available. Right. How, how flexible do you guys have to be when it comes to, well, you know what, that product XYZ is not going to be quite ready. Uh, flexible. <laughs> I mean, it depends on the on the dates um you know but we're we're constantly looking at that um so even when i was having my conversations with you that morning it was like all right guys i'm talking about this and this we're good right because we're confident that's going to be there um and we'll have to build in plan b's for some things at times you never know if something's not gonna quite get designed there or you run into some problems so yeah we we usually have to be pretty flexible but we we used to be a little bit more um, proactive in putting things in there that were very early in development. And um, we've kind of realized that um, our customers don't, they don't really like seeing things that are too far out from fruition. Um, you think you're trying to get new stuff out there. They just think, oh, I'm never gonna actually see this if you're telling me it's not gonna ship for 10 months. So yeah. um, we try to keep like a three month rule. If it's not gonna ship for three months after the show, we don't show it. Uh, so it, it's usually not, too bad, but it happens. It happens. That's a good rule, actually, especially nowadays. I mean, I mean 10, 15 years ago, uh, the term vaporware was around at CES, at I, at, yes. at, and everywhere else. Uh, having that three month rule is, is actually a really good idea. Yeah, it keeps us, it helps us make decisions too. Yeah, yeah just, absolutely. Well, okay, it's not going to happen. So, done, agreed, not doing it. All right, Miss Olivia, uh, again, uh, not only do you guys have ISE, you also have 
uh, your show, uh, even though the CDA the organization did sell off the show, you guys are still involved with, with the CDA Expo. Um, what do you guys do differently about, around trade shows, um, whether it's marketing or your messaging, to get folks interested in the show and coming into the show and seeing all the stuff you have to offer? Yeah, so I would agree with what Karen said. We really ramp up on social, and especially at the show, something we've been doing a little bit more often um, are Twitter takeovers uh, with mm. our group of volunteers who will take over the CDA Twitter account and just show us what's new, what's exciting. Um, we have some volunteers do that at CES and then at Design and Construction Week. So we just think that's a good way to, for our audience to see what's going on at the show and to kind of build some buzz around it. Um, and then just, again, interacting with our audience on social, especially leading up to the show, letting people know all the education that's available, both at ISE and at CDA Expo, there's a ton. So we just really try and make sure everyone realizes what's out there. But let's let's shift a little bit to, we, we, we talked a little bit about social media and I wanna get into, just get you to uh, take on this. There are so many different social media platforms uh, in general. And it's a little trite to say that there's a new one every day, but there's a new one fairly often. Uh, and depending on, on what age range you talk to, will kind of give you a sense of which one is the most popular for what demographic. Uh, you know, I have a 16 year old uh, niece who loves Snapchat and thinks that Facebook is for old people. Uh, so, you know, that's kind of my, 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 my gauge. My, my 11 year old daughter loves a, an app called Musical.ly because it allows her to, to create content and for, to share with her and her and her friends. So Olivia, I want to start with you. How do you guys keep track of some of the newer and up and coming uh, social media platforms? And when do you decide to jump on board and create a, a CDA handle for them? Yeah, so that's a really good question. And we had this um, discussion. I'll, I'll just talk about Snapchat real quick because that's something that we tried um, for the organization that we thought, oh, we'll see how it goes. And it just turned out our audience wasn't really on Snapchat. The audience of CDA members wasn't there. So you just kind of have to weigh whether your audience is there and then um, if it's worth the time investment. Because sometimes, believe it or not, social media can take a big chunk of your time during the day keeping up with everything and making sure you're updating enough. And so that's really kind of our barometer. We want to make sure that the places we are interacting on social media, that's where our audience is. And so Twitter is pretty big for Cedia. We have a pretty good Instagram following. Um, and then the LinkedIn group is the other main area. We have a Facebook as well. So, but it's just, we want to be available where our audience is, but we'll focus on where the best concentration is. Best concentration of, of your audience, not necessarily, you know, overarching audience. So. Yeah, yeah. Karen, same same question here. Whether it's it's milestone or or chief specifically, how do you guys choose? You know, which platform to to be a part of? Uh, very very similar. Uh, we actually did experiment with chat, Snapchat um, geo filters at Infocom last year, and sort of found the same thing. But uh, it's just not quite the market. Joel Hagen, who runs our our social media for the milestone brands, um, does a really good job of keeping up with what some of the newer social media platforms are and looking into things and trying to see who's who's there. Um, and there's certainly an argument to be made for trying to get into a platform before your audience is there so that you can build more of your own presence. Um, but you know, a lot of us run pretty lean, so it's, you don't have the time to do that on in every space. Um, we definitely got into Instagram a little earlier than I think most people, and we found it actually isn't as prevalent for sort of the Avixa group, but um, our workstation reps use it quite a bit. So for interior, um, commercial interiors. So that's an area that we've expanded a lot um, recently. But otherwise, yeah, Twitter, LinkedIn, and um, Facebook are the, the primaries that we use. Instagram's gotten in there. We try a few things periodically, but um, it's, it's tough because you, unless you're actually going to dedicate resources to maintaining them, uh, you, you can start all these things and not really have any success if you just start it and don't really actually dedicate the time to maintaining these platforms. Well, let's drill down to that. I mean, because we, we talked about Facebook and Twitter and, and, and some of the other ones. There are, there are tools people can use to schedule posts, um, whether that's, you know, the, the, the big ones of, of Facebook and, and Twitter and, and, and LinkedIn. But then you've got these other ones that, you know, you may or may not want to try. You want to explore and see whether or not your audience is there. 
how many, how much resources, whether that's time or, or manpower, how much resources do you dedicate to a new endeavor and, until you say, you know, okay, this is, this is not working for us. And, and what is that point? Yeah, I mean, we will dedicate a couple months usually on a new platform and see how that goes if, if we're picking up steam or if we feel like we're making some good contacts in there. Um, and after that, it's, it's kind of, uh, well, we're not, we're not there yet. Maybe we'll try it again, or maybe we'll just say this is probably not um, the space where our audience is, as Olivia put it. Uh, Olivia, same kind of question. How, how, much, how much resources do you guys dedicate before you kind of cut your losses and say, okay, this isn't for us? Um, you know, the Snapchat one is the best example I have that we, because we focused at the show on that one and saw pretty quickly that it didn't get a whole lot of pickup. And so we were able to decide, okay, we're, we're not going to invest in that moving forward. So it was pretty quick. Um, you know, beyond that, I think we've just dedicated the right amount of resources for building our Twitter audience and interacting on LinkedIn. So we just track that and make sure that each is getting its appropriate time and dedication. Let me throw you, uh, both of you a curveball here. And Karen, we'll start with you on this. If you want to create the perfect social media platform for Chief, right, or, or for Milestone, or, or you, you can expand it all out, out to LeGrand mm -hmm. or even just the AV world in general, what would that look like? Gosh, that's an interesting question. But um, we actually have found some things around like Reddit and some other platforms where people have um, found communities where they've used to answer questions that has to do with any products that, you know, sometimes chief mounts or whatever it is, where they sort of, um, I want to say diagnose, but they help each other. Um, so I, it would be interesting to find some sort of platform that is more of like a community forum uh, where people can talk about AV installs, what's worked, what hasn't. Um, this may exist, I don't, you know, somewhere in a blog, but uh, to have a little bit more of a sort of a just interaction amongst professionals that can talk about what's worked for them. I have this specific challenge. How did you get around it? Has anyone found something that does this? Um, I mean, something like that might be useful. All right, uh, Olivia, same question. Develop uh, your own specific audiovisual um, uh, social media platform. <laughs> you know, um, we have a community platform, Cedia does, the Cedia community that's available to members. And I would say if we could get more members to use that, that would be the ideal platform. We have all of our papers and guidelines on there. There are huge discussion threads just what you were talking about, you know, successes or failures with different installs, uh, experiences with different products. And um, we have social feeds in there as well. So it's just getting more people on there and um, maybe making it a more user-friendly space. It's great online, but it's not super mobile friendly. So that's something that we're actually working with our vendor on to try and get an app pulled together for that. And so it, I, there's potential for it to be our good AV social media platform. How do you get that out there? Because I mean, obviously, if you're a member of Cedia, you would expect people to know that, right? Or is it something mm -hmm. where you, you, know, you just need to get it in front of people more? Um, so if you're a member, you do get an email like letting you know that you can interact with it. So it's just kind of poking and saying, hey, don't forget, you have this as a benefit. Hey, it's still available to you. Um, join the conversation. So it's, yeah, once people get in there, they, they interact quite a bit. So it's encouraging to see, but it's uh, getting them in there and getting them plugged in. That yeah. can sometimes be a challenge. Yeah, absolutely. Because getting folks just used to the idea that, hey, I can interact with this. I can post to this. I can ask questions and, and get feedback and interact with other professionals. I think it's kind of neat. So yeah. All right, y'all. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Ms. Karen Schmidt from, uh, from Milestone and, and Chief, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, how do people find you uh, or, or Chief or come by the, the, the stand at ISE? Yeah, well, you can find us on milestone.com for all the brands. You can find me on Twitter at Chief underscore Karen S. And of course, I'll be looking forward to seeing anybody that wants to stop by the booth in Amsterdam. It's 2C50 would be the booth for all of the Milestone brands. Yeah, Hall 2. Uh, and according to, uh, to Marco from, uh, from Projecta, which is a part of, of Milestone, uh, you guys have really good coffee. So yeah. yes, we will have coffee. <laughs> very so important. No, no, not just coffee. coffee. Not just yeah. any coffee. Good coffee. The best coffee. The Stop best on by coffee. for the best coffee. All right. Uh, all right, Miss Olivia Selke, thank you so much. 
Thank you. And how do people find you and or Cedia? Um, they can find Cedia at Cedia.net or on Twitter uh, at Cedia. And then Cedia will also be at ISE. Our stand is 1E20. All 1E20. Very good. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, my name is Tim Albright. Don't follow me on the Twitters. But go by the website if you would, please. Uh, you'll find us at avnation.tv. avnation.tv, this program, and a host of others. Uh, we have two weeklies. One uh, is called Resi Week, hosted by our, my buddy uh, Matt Scott. He covers the CDS side. He covers the residential side of AV. Uh, the other one is called AV Week. It's a weekly look at the commercial AV news uh, and information hosted by myself that happens every uh, every Monday. Uh, all that and more. Also, uh, check out our special ISE coverage because we'll be headed to Amsterdam also, uh, hanging out with Karen and, and the group there, I think, on Wednesday. And uh, also check out our underwriter section. These are the folks uh, that help us financially and help us go to ISE and, and bring these shows like uh, like this one to you. And, and Chief is, is one of those. We appreciate their support. So all that and more at the website, avnation.tv, avnation.tv. Mm-hmm.